Okay, there's um, a lot of things going on right now, a lot of things um, I could talk about, but I thought this one would be worth mentioning because in a world where there's so much bad news, so many tragic things, so many, um, so much cause for depression, news-wise, um, this seems to be good news. This seems to be something that, on the surface at least, can be cautiously welcomed. Uh, I'm not going to read out the whole report because it's a bit lengthy, but it's from The Guardian. Um, this is a report by Jason Burke and Zainab Mohammed Salah. And the title is Sudan on Path to Democracy as Ex-Ruling Party is Dissolved. Activists celebrate passing of key demands of protest movement that toppled Bashir. Um, if you recall, early in the year, the regime of Omar al-Bashir, which was one of the world's most brutal, responsible for the genocide in Darfur, collapsed. Um, so the first few paragraphs I'll just read out. Activists in Sudan have welcomed a decision by the country's transitional government to dissolve the former ruling party and repeal a series of laws used to regulate women's behaviour from the former President Omar al-Bashir. Bashir has been in detention since being forced from power in April when security forces withdrew their support for his regime after months of popular protests in which more than 100 were killed. So the revolution wasn't bloodless. Unfortunately, there was violence in, in Khartoum and elsewhere. However, it looks like it paid off. Yosra Fuad, uh, a women's rights activist in Khartoum and veteran campaigner against the public order laws, said the move to abrogate the public order laws was a success for the women's rights movement and f women's rights movement and for everyone in Sudan. These laws were used to designed to intentionally, uh, I think that means and designed to intentionally oppress women. Abolishing them means a step forward for the revolution in which masses of women have participated. It's a very victorious moment for all of us, and I'm hoping to see more from our transitional government. Under Bashir, the laws were deployed to impose conservative Islamic social codes, restricting women's freedom of dress, movement, association, work and study. This could include preventing women from wearing trousers or leaving their hair uncovered in public or mixing with men other than their husbands or an immediate relative. Those found to have contravened the law could be punished with flogging. The Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok called the rules an instrument of exploitation, humiliation, violation, aggression on the rights of citizens. Abia Hazabala, a rights activist, said the repeal was a culmination of the courageous struggles of women for 30 years and showed the failure of Islamist ideology. Women martyrs deserve it, she told Reuters. Saif Magango of Amnesty International said, This is a big step forward for women's rights in Sudan. The repeal of the public order laws was long overdue. Many women were arbitrarily arrested, beaten and deprived of the rights to freedom of association and expression under this discriminatory law. And it goes on to uh, mention more about the background situation. Um, OK, the repeal of these laws is definitely... Um, a welcome development. Just trying to get better lighting here. Um, of course, always with these situations, one has to temper um, optimism with some caution as well, because countries do not change overnight, and no doubt there will be still areas that um, need to be looked into. For example, accountability for the massacre of protesters earlier this year. That's let's not forget over a hundred people were killed around the same time as the Tiananmen Square commemorations from China, um, Sudan was witnessing its own Tiananmen Square. The difference being, of course, in this case, the regime was overthrown. Um, now, Sudan's a country with a very tragic history. That goes without saying. Two brutal civil wars costing in excess of two million lives. Um, the war and genocide in Darfur, um, partition, famine in 1998 and 1993 you know this is a country that really has experienced hardship so for sudan to finally have some good news um really does need to be welcomed women of course did play a central role in the revolution i remember the young woman who was dubbed the nubian queen that she made an impassioned speech in in the square in khartoum um I believe it was tahrir square i know there's a tahrir square in cairo as well but Women have played a central role to this revolution, so it is essential that they're right to know um, this is upheld. But it certainly looks like a step in the right direction. 
And um, with that, Sudan will find that sanctions ease, that there is more thinking about investment in the country. When countries move towards democracy, they progress. True democracy, which includes human rights. So this is good news, you know. Um, yes, there should be caution around it, but I would say it's good news. I remember when the Colombian peace protest was going on, um, you know, there's still been violence in Colombia, so Sudan isn't totally out of the woods yet. You know, nation building takes time, but I think this can only be a good thing, and hopefully it will send out a message to other regimes, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and elsewhere, um, that, you know, people power is, is strong. And I also think that Western feminists need to look at this and think these are women fighting for the right not to be have conservative Islamist um, dogma imposed on them. So when women in the West, you know, talk about the rights of hijabi, it's fine. But I would like to see them just as vocal about the right of women not to wear Islamic um, clothes. And of course, there's debate over what the theocratic instructions there actually are. But, you know, the next Women's March, I'd like them to focus on issues like this. These women have shown courage. They're inspirational, um, as has everyone who took part in this revolution. And it's good news. Sudan really needs good news. And if this... Um, you know, if it keeps going forward, the country will prosper because more countries will then invest in Sudan. And, um, you know, to, to go from a situation where it was in the midst of bleak genocide in Darfur and that conflict still isn't entirely over. Incidentally, China backed the losing regime in this case. China funded the Bashir regime to their shame. Um, but I think that this should be a warning to authoritarian regimes everywhere that um, people power means something. And in the case of Sudan, it looks like there's some genuine cause for optimism. If you're in Sudan, do let me know um, what your feelings are about this. Are you optimistic for the future? Um, I do think there needs to be an independent inquiry into the protesters who died earlier this year, because if they don't get justice, then there will be festering resentment and there'll be no chance of reconciliation. Uh, there needs to be justice for the innocent people murdered earlier this year by the security services. Um, even in a country that which has experienced so much violence, it just shows the revolution wasn't without cost. So good news for Sudan.